This position is a force checkmate in 14 moves, and it is one of the most spectacular and beautiful force checkmates that I've ever seen. The main line is incredible, but the sidelines also feature gorgeous and unique checkmating patterns. The position is from the game Corrales vs. Farragut from Cuba in 2004. Now a grandmaster, Fidel Corrales at the time was but 16 or 17 and basically has no games in the database. So I do not have the full game score, but fortunately we do have this final combination. Now, in this initial position, there is just fire on board, and it looks like Black is the one who's really close to winning the game. Black is threatening this knight, which is kind of nice, but Black also has threats like bishop f5 check, rook c1 check, and queen a4 check. The king is extremely unsafe here for white. Fortunately for white, white has the biggest advantage you can basically ever have in a chess game, which is the move. And in this position, white has an important move. Rook takes h7 check. So we have a rook sacrifice, and it's a nice rook sacrifice, but initially it doesn't look that impressive. King takes h7, queen h5 check, and king g7. What is your follow-up in this position? Now, probably what black anticipated was the natural blunder queen to g5 check. This really seems like the only possible logical follow-up to the rook sacrifice. But after queen g5 check and then king f8, White can play queen d8 check or queen to e7 check, but ultimately there's only a draw by perpetual in this particular line. White always has queen checks on d8 and on e7 and on f6 and on g5 and on h5, but there is no more. The knight, rook, and bishop are locked out of the attack and the queen is unable to deliver checkmate on her own. So, Instead of the very natural queen to g5 check, the key move is the spectacular queen to h6 check, giving up the queen to force checkmate. Now, after you give up your queen, you are losing in this position a huge chunk of the firepower that you have on the board. You only have a knight, rook, and bishop that will remain, and the rook and bishop are locked out. Fortunately, after queen h6 check and the forced king takes h6, the follow-up is f5 check, which is basically a double discovery. You have discovered check here from the bishop, but you also are clearing the line for the rook with this one move. This f5 move just really brings all of the coordination to white's forces. So here, after f5 check, what is black to play? Well, we're going to basically look at all the options. They all feature nice patterns. If the king goes to h5 or h7, basically staying on the h file, then we have rook to h4 checkmate, the rook covering the h file, and the bishop and the pawn covering those g file squares. So if f5 check, instead of stepping to the h file, we could choose king g7 here for black. Not the most resilient, but there are many different variations to calculate here as well f6 check, and let's say first what happens if the king steps forward, king to g6. Here we have knight e7 check, and the king is now forced to the h-file, h7 or h5, and you have rook to h4 checkmate. But the king could also step back after f6 check. You could choose king to f8. Then in this position we have bishop h6 check, the rook can and really should block because king e8 allows mate in one with knight c7 checkmate. Not too difficult, but another very nice checkmating pattern. After rook g7 here, you can checkmate in three, both by capturing with the bishop and by capturing with the pawn. But by far my favorite is capturing with the pawn. Now, if king e8, you have here knight to f6 check, king e7. And you might have noticed here that you could play rook d7, and that's checkmate. But that would be just a disastrous missed opportunity for white because instead of rook d7 checkmate, you can under promote to a knight with checkmate. And how could you possibly miss this once in a lifetime opportunity? Just make sure that you 
don't have auto queen on because G8 equals queen. If you had auto queen on and couldn't find the setting to change or didn't know to hold alt while you queen if you want to take that off, would be a disastrous move because black would now be checkmating with bishop f5 or queen b1 in this position. So backing up, there is one other line we should look at here after f takes g7 check. Uh, here the king doesn't have to go to e8 and walk into this under promotion with a knight checkmate. The king could also go over to uh, g8 stepping in front of the pawn, but things are a little simpler here. We have knight f6 checkmate. I really like these checkmates where the knight is giving the check and also covering a key escape square. And here I also appreciate the bishop and the pawn working together to cover the dark squares. So backing up, that was long and fairly complicated, but the longer line here, the more resilient line that black has is rook g5. By blocking with the rook, the king gets a little more room to run on the back rank. So rook g5 is met by rook h4 check. The rook cannot block because it is pinned. So the only legal move here is king to g7. F6 check, and the king cannot step forward. If it does, king g6, there is maiden one. Knight to e7 check, another great example of the knight giving a check and covering one of those key escape squares. So after f6 check, if the king steps straight back with king g8, then you have knight e7 check, king f8, and because the knight managed to step up here with tempo after rook to h8, it's just mate because rook g8, rook takes g8, uh, allows the knight to defend the rook. So more resilient after f6 check is king f8. And now you have rook h8 check, rook back to g8, bishop to h6 check, and then the king is stepping over. And it looks like white has gone wrong, right? In fact, as I was solving this as a puzzle, I thought I must have gone wrong in my calculations and I was not on the right track here because once the king escapes to this d7 square, how are you going to checkmate it? And I almost gave up, but then I found the key idea. It is rook takes g8 check, king d7, knight to b6 check, king c7, and the knight is under attack, but rook c8 check. Another brilliant move that you must see almost 10 moves after you've sacrificed your queen on h6. And without this move, none of it would have worked. So rook c8 check, forcing black's king to capture the knight. And now bishop back to e3 check. The king can step over to the a file right away, but you can prolong things by one move by pushing up the c pawn, but the bishop captures and is defended by the rook. The king is forced to the a file, king a6 or a5, and rook a8 check mate. 14 moves after our initial rook sacrifice. I love the path of the black king. It is now checkmated on the A file and has been driven there after going from H8 to H7, uh, and the H8 square being the corner square on the H file, particularly aesthetic to me. So H8 to H7 to G7 to H6, back to G7, over to F8, then to E8, D7, C7, B6, and finally to a6 where it is checkmated driven literally from one side of the board one corner of the board to the other absolutely spectacular i did a video for chess.com on the top 10 most beautiful checkmating patterns and i had not seen this checkmating pattern yet but if i were to do that video again this would easily be in my top five it's so incredible Thanks so much for watching the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment. That feedback is super motivating to me and keeps me wanting to do more videos. If you wanna watch another video, maybe check out my video on the 10 most beautiful checkmating patterns for chess.com. Some are even maybe slightly more beautiful than this.